and gentlemen to month of the full moon here on reaction and review tonight guys i'm taking a look at a movie from 1993 kind of a sci-fi action horror outing i'm going i'm going to assume and it's a crossover movie oh fun the movie is doll man versus demonic toys yes it's the final movie in this little three pack here and um well I'm going to give you guys a little, you know, like, rundown here. Doll Man was really good, and Demonic Toys really sucked. So what happens when, essentially, peanut butter and vinegar mix? Well, that sounds incredibly disgusting. But, uh, it might make for a good movie. I don't know, because the other time I saw the fucking Demonic Toys crossover with something, it was with the Puppet Master franchise, and that was absolutely abysmally bad so yeah my hopes are a little low but this also features doll man so my hopes are crawling a little i want this to be good i really do but the only way for me to find out is if i shut the hell up i push play and i see if i see if this crossover has any promise and i'm gonna do that right now so without further ado it's time to kick back relax and check out doll man versus demonic toys Wow. After one line, I already want baby fucking oopsie, get a daisy to die. You have no idea how much I despise that character. The very fact that all of a sudden now, it's voiced by Frank fucking Welker, that really is just sort of a disappointment because I kind of thought that Frank Welker knew how to pick, you know, decent, decent roles to voice. I guess I was wrong. Wow. They nerfed Doll Man's gun. In his in his previous outing, his pistol was powerful enough to blow holes in full-sized people while he's still only 13 inches tall. All of a sudden now it takes two shots to kill a fucking spider. That's just fucking wrong, guys. There's no way in hell. This fucking movie is only an hour long and they've spent the last five minutes or so summing up Doll Man and now they're working on another movie that, that got factored into this which is one I've never seen which is called Bad Channels. Were they really that desperate to pad out all of this by, you know, giving us summations for all three films? Because like the first minute of the film proper was a summation of fucking de uh, fucking de demonic toys good god guys there is there is padding and then there's excessive padding guess which one this is okay and the you know robots down it only took brick about seven shots to kill him with his once awesome gun I, I still can't believe they fucking nerfed his gun dude that's bullshit Oh my god, we're getting more padding. This time they're showing us the flashback, or they're flashing back to the flashback from Demonic Toys. Do you have any idea how absolutely retarded that is? Good god, this is fucking terrible, guys. Well, guys, that was Doll Man vs. Demonic Toys. Jesus fuck, I'm so happy that was done. Okay, let me shut that off. Well, where to even start? Well, I guess I should start with the positives. I can say without question that this is the strongest entry in the Demonic Toys franchise. 
However, considering the other films in question, that isn't saying much, and the fact that this thing sucked, sucked horribly too, really speaks even worse about the other films in the series. Now, uh, boy, um, what else can I say uh, for positives? The, well, the, well, the camera work was good, and a whole lot of the prop, props were nice. A couple of the props were a little sketchy. I will cover those in just a sec. Um... Oh yeah, uh, Quiet Riot is heavily featured on the soundtrack, and the music was pretty good, but then again, I'm a fan of 80s hair metal, so of course, you know, having four or five Quiet you know, Riot songs on a soundtrack is instantly going to get positive marks with me. Um, the acting was okay from, well, the people who know how to act, that's... Uh, and when I say that, I mean basically like two, three, four people in the movie know knew how to act and actually turned in a halfway decent showing. Everybody else, no. That's it for positives. Now let's dive into the negatives. First of all, for a movie that's only an hour long. In fact, guys, the closing credits here are rolling at 56 minutes. Uh, so for a movie that clocks in at 56 minutes, Jesus God, there is a lot of fucking padding. We have we have flashbacks, which are basically just summing up Dollman... The, we have two of them for we two of them for demonic toys and one for and one for bad channels. I will say this: I knew I knew that bad channels was worked into this as well. I've never seen that that movie. I would kind of like to now, because the because what I saw here looked infinitely better than 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 the than the movie I just watched. So yeah, that's so yeah that oh yeah that is also another positive. This has sort of caught caught my interest in wanting to watch bad channels um good god uh but yeah we have all this padding which sums up these these three movies um and i said that like five minutes was dedicated to doll man that was way off it was like two minutes it was like two minutes for that one it was two minutes for you know bad channels if we were to take both of the both of the demonic toys flashbacks those would come up to about three minutes so we are already looking at seven minutes worth of padding in a 56-minute film. That's not fucking good, okay? And the and the writing that is here is ridiculously shit because it's probably like the dumbest way you could get, you know, brick where you get brick, gray, and ginger together. Ginger apparently was the lead character in, or one of the lead characters in Bad Channels. That's how they work this in. And also they have her there specifically because you need somebody else who is brick's height. And while brick, well, brick, well, not brick, was an alien from another planet. Everyone on his planet's only 12 inches tall. She was shrunk by aliens. It all kind of made sense. Um, but really, they just sort of found, like, the laziest fucking way to hook all three films to, to together. And they are there specifically for, essentially, Brick, Doll Man, to just totally lay waste to the toys. While I'm on the subject of the toys, the original Demonic Toys had kind of put in place a handful of very established toys. Specifically, specifically Oopsie Daisy, the Jack in the Box, the Robot, and the Teddy Bear. And the Teddy Bear is nowhere to be found here. Instead, we get this really ugly, really poorly made G.I. like G.I. Joe clone. And it looks horrible. Uh, especially since you see him and it's always just a guy in a suit. Uh, I will cover costuming in just a moment. Well, costuming slash effects. I will cover that. Um, but yeah, let's just stick with writing right now. Uh, of course with, uh, writing comes my biggest gripe, which is that Brick's, which is Brick's gun, which in the original Doll Man was established to be so fucking powerful that it makes Robocop's pistol look like, look like an airsoft gun. The very fact that all of a sudden a gun that could blow up, that, that could blow up full-size human beings in one shot has been nerfed to the point where it takes him six or seven shots to kill anything. There's only one character who dies in one shot and that's partially because he was shooting it at point he was shooting at it from point blank range which basically then any gun becomes an incredibly destructive weapon at that short distance so you know 
So yeah, they went and they nerfed one of the coolest weapons in, in movie history, and that is absolutely unforgivable. Uh, the story here, like I said, is just is just incredibly lazy. And to be totally honest with you, we really we really didn't have to have Officer you know Gray there. We didn't have to have Ginger there. It really it really could have just been a random a ra a random woman who was somehow shrunk and just some random officer who was looking after who was looking for the toys, and it would have worked. The only fucking reason why either of them are there is because. Officer Gray was in was was in the original Demonic Toys, and they wanted to shoehorn in bad channels for whatever baffling reason. I'm not totally sure why. Um, anyway, the writing here is just poor, and again, the very fact that they had to put in all of that padding kind of sort of punctuates how bad the writing was. Acting here, well, once more, uh, we have a handful of actors who do really well. Um, such as, well, Thomerson is playing, you know, Brick, uh, is playing, is playing Brick again, and that works out great. Melissa, it was Melissa Bear is playing, you know, Ginger, and she does, you know, pretty good. I'm not sure how good she was in Bad Channels, but again, I'll find out at some point. Um, there is, and there is this, uh, and there is this security officer Who's played by who is played by a dwarf, and I can never remember his name, but he shows up in a lot of full moon films, and he does a fantastic job here. Um, it's just that everybody else sucked, and that includes legendary voice actor Frank Welker as he's forced to voice Baby Oopsie Daisy. I oh, and speaking of that, I I do want to cover one other thing, one other positive, and it is about the writing. When I covered Demonic Toys, I did say that one of my biggest issue issues was that Baby Oopsie Daisy had to swear in every single line of dialogue, and I said that it, I said that was incredibly excessive. Well, they did certainly tone it, you know, back. Now, Baby Oopsie Daisy swears maybe once every three or four lines, so at least it's progress. Um, but with but with this voice actor change comes a huge issue with me, and that is when they are showing the flashback to the original demonic toys. Oopsie Daisy has a single line which was performed by the original voice actress, and when you hear that, and then and then less than ten minutes later, Oopsie Daisy speaking again and is suddenly voiced by Frank Welker, it seems way out of place. The least that they could have done was had Welker go and say that one line, all two words of it, and loop it into the previous footage so that way there's some kind of steady continuity through this film. It honestly would not have broken their, their budget any if, if they would have done that. But this, but this, you you can almost hear it in his voice that Welker did not want to do this, which I can totally understand. If I honestly were paid to work in a shit bag film film like this, I probably wouldn't put in any fucking effort either. Um, let's talk about props. Every single one of the toys, minus that new one who randomly pops in for no real reason at all, all of them are directly from the original film, which is fine because. I never really said anything negative about the way that the toys looked. The toys looked great. Well, except for, well, Oopsie Daisy looked incredibly creepy whenever it smiled, and it still looks creepy when it smiles. And uh, they did fix one other issue, which was that I it was my complaint about the as my complaint about the Jack in the Box having a baby rattle tied to its tail. Uh, that is that is thankfully gone because uh, it looked incredibly stupid in in the original film. Uh, but because they have to interact with Brick, who again is only 12 inches tall, uh, they had to make suits and larger prop versions of all of these. And Oopsie Daisy looks horrible, and the Jack in the Box looks worse, probably because the Jack in the Box is essentially just a giant rubber head, uh, and it looks drastically different from the puppet that's used in every other shot. It looks incredibly distracting. Same thing can also be said about. Same thing can be said about Oopsie Daisy, and as for the G.I. Joe clone, well, uh, I really don't know what to what to say about him. He looks incredibly ugly. The suit itself looked ridiculously bulky, which you would not imagine that, that to be a problem, because 
it was a G.I. Joe doll. Those things are proportioned like a normal human being. Why the hell would the suit be incredibly bulky? I don't know, and frankly, I don't want to know. The character, I, I'm going to assume, was thrown in specifically so Brick could have a fist fight with with, you know, one of the toys, and it would probably have seemed goofy if he if he were punching a teddy bear. Anyway, uh, and then also for, for, for props, because we have two characters who are both about a foot tall, they had to make large, large-scale versions of, you know, regularly small items. Uh, one of which that, that, that stands out and looks terrible is a butter knife, which is literally about as thin as this playing card. Um, looked horrible, but otherwise, oh, and I didn't know that butter knives came that thin, including the handle. Uh, but hey, beyond that, though, prop work was fantastic. Trying to make everything look, you know, bigger, bigger in order in order to accommodate our smaller characters. That was that was great. Um, and the spider that I mentioned earlier was done in stop motion and looked fantastic. Uh, and of course, since and of course, since the toys are all just from the previous film, uh, all of those look okay. Well, at least the Jack in the Box looks, you know, okay. And the robot does nothing. And the robot, as I stated earlier, is you know blown away rather quickly. Spoiler: the robot is killed rather quickly. <laughs> um, there's so ultimately, guys, is there anything good here? Well, I mean, well, I did state that there was something good. Can I recommend the movie? No, I cannot. There is just no earthly way in God's green earth. This movie was terrible. Um, and yet it's still the best film I've seen which featured the demonic toys. But again, considering that the other two were demonic toys and Puppet Master versus demonic toys, that's not saying much. Oh boy. So yeah, guys, out of all three movies on this little uh, three-pack, the only one I thought was even half good was... Doll Man, and even that thing had a couple of issues, but I was able to look past them. As for and as for demonic toys and Doll Man versus, I avoid those. In fact, avoid this franchise at all costs. Everything associated with it turns to shit. And frankly, the fact that this thing is the fucking Doll Man sequel is an absolute disservice to the original Doll Man. Let's just let's just make that point abundantly clear right now. So. Dollman vs. Demonic Toys came off the Amazon.com wish list. The person who sent it in is a friend of mine. Her name is Kari, and as always, you can find her YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash Firefox Kari. And Kari, thank you, because, uh, well, again, I was always curious about all three of these movies, and you, and, you, and you gave me the chance to watch them. It's kind of a pity that only one of them was actually any good. But, hey, though, hey those honestly are the risks I take when I watch movies in this series i never i never know if they're if they're going to be good until i'm until i start watching them and well this one was a massive letdown so yeah so yes guys swing on over to kari's channel and go check out everything which she has as for me <sighs> wow that was bad i'm going to go watch puppet master 4 just so that way i can remember what a good what a what a good movie about evil toys is all about well, they weren't necessarily evil in 4. I don't care, it's still a better fucking movie. I'm going to go watch that and probably watch 5 immediately afterwards. So yes. <laughs> so yeah, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.